Hold on to your butts, fellow vegetable nerds, because we're making soup. Hey, turn up the caramel and chisel on the shizney. It's time for me to wop. Let me introduce myself. I'm a cheetah burrito. My pants are made of leather. I find a hot to come straight. So today we're going to be making another recipe from another cookbook that was sent to me from my wish list. This is another one sent to me by Ashley. She has been so generous and so kind to send me so many things from the wish list, and I've been really having a great time with a lot of these. Well, with all of these. This book is called Eat It Up, and this is by Sherry Brooks Vinton, and she's the best-selling author of Put 'Em Up. Apparently she's got a, a theme going on. This is all about sort of kitchen economy, which is something I am really into. This is the book about using every part of the food that you eat. One thing I like about it is I know that there are a lot of books about using various parts of vegetables. There's a whole bunch of them. Trust me, I've got a million of them on my wish list. But this one here goes a little bit farther. So not only uh, does it talk about using various parts that are would normally be thought of as maybe inedible or unusable to make food with so that you're not wasting anything, but also it goes into other things such as like, you know, little bits of, of leftover cheese, like, you know, cheese rinds or condiments, or, you know, when you get to the, the last little bit of jelly or mustard or something like that, ways to use every last bit of everything to make your money stretch a little bit further and to reduce your waste. All of that is good stuff. I am having such a good time reading through this book. And today I have settled on a very appropriate recipe for right now because it is spring, it is asparagus season, and I am eating asparagus like it is my paid employment. I love asparagus so much, but you're always left with these woody ends. Now remember what we talked about before, there is a difference between inedible, which is what you would normally call the ends of asparagus, and poisonous or harmful. You know, inedible doesn't mean you can't eat it, it just means you probably might not want to. But in a lot of cases, what it really means is you just have to take some extra steps or be a little bit extra creative to use it. This book is full of suggestions for things like that. I will probably be making more stuff from this in the future, but today we're making asparagus butt soup. There are a million things in here that could be called butt soup. None of them is actually called butt soup. Just in her defense, in the defense of Sherry Brooks Vinton, this recipe is actually just called asparagus soup. You know, why not? When you have an excess of asparagus ends, what can you make but soup? If you think that's the last time I'm gonna make a joke like that in this video, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you are mistaken. I'm five. The basic bones of this is you need a couple cups of asparagus butts, just the woody bits. Basically, when you're cutting your asparagus, you're gonna your, your knife is gonna find the right spot, you know? It, it, it's gonna go easily through the easy parts. Once you get to a part where it doesn't go through so easily, that's your woody bits, okay? It's just got a lot of extra fiber in there. A lot of um, lignans, probably, which is, you know, the type of fiber that makes plants, you know, stand up instead of fall over. So you're gonna need a couple cups of those. You're gonna need some potatoes, isn't it lucky? I just have some huckleberry gold potatoes. It calls for a pound of these, and guess who finally bought a kitchen scale? And then immediately lost it. And then found it, eventually, looking for something else they lost. Are you getting that this is me? D yeah, sorry, it is me. And that's when I realized that I had put it in a, a real dumb place. And I never, ever, ever would have found it ever again until, like, I moved. If I hadn't been looking for a different thing that I put in a dumb place. Did I ever find that other thing? I did not. And it calls for a shallot or a leek. I do have that green garlic that I just bought and I'm so tempted, but I just happen to have a shallot and this has been in my possession longer than the green garlic, so fine. I'm gonna go ahead and use that up first because this episode's all about kitchen economy and sometimes that means first in, first out. You're gonna need a couple tablespoons of butter. It calls for unsalted butter. I, I don't buy unsalted butter. I've never had a problem using salted butter for literally everything I've ever needed to use in my entire life and I'm probably not gonna stop. So two tablespoons of whatever butter you would like to use. If you are, you know, vegan and you would like to use vegan butter, be my guest, I don't care. That's, you know, this is your food, you enjoy it. And then you need, it calls for either vegetable stock, which I normally keep on hand, but I don't have any of right now, 
or blonde chicken stock, which she has a recipe for in here, and I did not make any of that. I have some chicken base that I got from Penzi's. I've used this a few times before and I really like it. Like it's got a really nice, like, like it tastes exactly like you want chicken to taste. It's not, it's not vegan. So if you are a vegan, I mean, obviously you're, you're gonna use what they tell you to use, which is vegetable stock. You're gonna do a better job than I did. I'm just using what I have. So it's gonna have a little bit more flavor than it's supposed to. It's supposed to taste more vegetable-y and it's gonna taste a little bit more chicken-y, but uh, you know, I'm not sad about it. So it's gonna be fine. And I think that's more or less it for ingredients. For at least at this stage of the game. You know what's frustrating? When it's done, you're supposed to garnish it with chives. And that's the one thing that didn't come in my milk run order. Mer. But I have the lovely greens from the green garlic that I can toss on top, so that's gonna be great. That's gonna be fine. This is gonna be pretty easy to do. So let's start throwing all this together and see how it comes out. Let's just start making our butt soup. So we're gonna dice up our shallot, and then we're gonna saute it in the butter, in our saucepan, over medium heat, about three to five minutes. So I'm using this. This is cast iron coated with like ceramic. This is, is pretty good. Because I'm not great with estimating amounts and capacities and volumes and such, I actually added up all of the numbers of cups of ingredients that would be required and put them in here in the form of water and found that it would hold it all. So hopefully I was correct about that and I got the right size container. Because I do like the fact that that can be used for both sauteing and for, you know, boiling or simmer simmering or whatever, because we're gonna need to do both. And it's gonna be a lot easier just to do it all in one dish. So here is our diced up shallot, ready to go in. And because the focus of this episode is on kitchen economy, I should remind you, all of your little, you know, your ends and your little bit of shallot paper and all of that, Remember to hang on to that because later on you can make stock out of it. So while this is cooking for a couple of minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up my potatoes. They say to peel the potatoes. Also, they say that you want like a starchy potato, like a russet. I'm not gonna use a russet. We've kind of gotten into this before why I prefer the huckleberry gold to the russets. They are the lower glycemic. They're not starchy, but they're gonna have to do. Also, I'm not gonna peel them. <laughs> She does specifically say you should peel these and then save the peels and she has some recipes that you can use for potato peels. This is just another one of those things where I am just sort of a little stubborn and bloody minded about it. Like I don't peel potatoes. I don't want to, I don't care to. I like the peels. When I'm making mashed potatoes, I leave the peel in. It, it, none of that bothers me. I understand why with certain types of potatoes, it would be a good idea to do that because you, if there's any sort of greening underneath the peel, you can get that out of the way and just don't even take any chances on getting yourself a little sick. That's not gonna be an issue with these. So I feel like I have even less of a reason to peel them. So I'm just not gonna. If that ends up like biting me in the butt later on, well, lesson learned. I think it'll be fine. This is, by the way, what huckleberry golds look like on the inside. So, huckleberry, gold. Let's see how they got their name. Mm. These are the loveliest potatoes. <laughs> they are so good. And I almost feel like I should just shut up about them because they're not always available. And when they are available, I want them. I feel like I'm, I might be creating some competition to get them. But then again, if more people ask for them, more people will grow them and sell them. Plus, why do I deserve all the potatoes? You know, we all deserve potatoes. So put that on a sampler. We all deserve potatoes. Those shallots smell so good. Shallots are like, like a milder, sweeter, fancier onion. They are, oh, the, the smell in here, I wish you were here so you could smell this. Beautiful. It doesn't say how big to chop them. It just says to chop the potatoes. So I'm just kind of go, I mean, they're not perfectly uniform, but they don't have to be, it's okay. We're just gonna whiz it all up in the end anyway. So now we're gonna add the potatoes. We're gonna add the asparagus ends and we're gonna add our stock. And we're not gonna use the whole asparagus stock. We're gonna use the edible parts for, you know, what we would normally use asparagus for. Maybe I'll saute them. Sauteed asparagus is so good, y'all. Just, I know a lot of people like to boil asparagus. I used to when I was younger because I didn't know any other way to do it. And then I was in a grocery store and somebody was giving out samples. It's a weird thing to give out samples of, but she was sauteing them in butter with just a little bit of salt and pepper and 
oh my god it was so good they get a nice little char on the outside and they're so delicious and so now that's how I mostly make them that is a digression <laughs> Which is why I put the stock in first, because I knew I was going to stop and talk and I didn't want my shallots burning. We're just using the ends, just the butts, and the other parts we're going to use for our normal stuff. So now we're going to bring it to a simmer, and then we're going to cook it, cook it until the potatoes are falling apart. They're saying about 25 minutes. If this is something that you want to do, but you don't have the time or energy to do it immediately, you can just stick it in a baggie, with all your little butt ends, after you're done eating your asparagus, toss it in the freezer. And then when you're ready to, there they are. So like I said, it doesn't say whether you want to have a lid on or not. However, this has a lid. So I think it's gonna be probably, I assume, easier to keep it at a simmer while using less power by having a lid on it because the lid's gonna keep all of that heat in there and I think it'll cook a little bit more quickly. I'm gonna get it just about to a boil and then uh, put the lid on it lower the heat just a little bit just to keep it simmering and then keep checking back on it for a while so the potatoes are still simmering i've got them down to a fairly low temperature because they stay at a simmer really well in a cast iron i know i said they're covered in in uh ceramic obviously they're not covered in ceramic i just couldn't think of the word enamel it is by the way like two in the morning i mean what else do you do at two in the morning but make butt soup but i wanted to show you something while it's cooking do you remember from the last episode, the Milk Run episode, remember those Kyogya beets? I remembered. It still feels weird to say it. it doesn't, just, it's, ugh, chaga was so much fun because I could go like chaga, 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 chaga. There's still a mushroom called chaga, so I still get to make the noise. Also, it's free country, I can make the noise anytime I want to. Uh, these beets, I have decided to pickle them. I sliced them really thin. And I've got some red onion in there. I found a recipe online to keep them raw. It's a quick pickle, but they've got a couple hours left to go. Uh, they say not to eat them for like three hours. Free country. That's gonna be nice when it's done. The flavors haven't quite settled in yet, so you still get a little bit more earthy than the sweet, but that's gonna be really nice. And the recipe that I found had even a further recipe for how to use it the next day. So that's being marinated in some olive oil, and some red wine vinegar, and uh, the, it called for seasoned rice wine vinegar, which I didn't have, I just had reg regular rice vinegar. And it turns out that the only real difference is just that the seasoned one has some sugar and salt in it. So even better, I just you know found the measurements to make the one the other, and I added a sugar substitute. So I have seasoned rice vinegar without the sugar. I'll post the recipe. Uh, down below so you can see it because I don't remember. I will try and post some pictures of you know the final dish to my Instagram. If you didn't know I have an Instagram check the description down on the bottom and you can see that. And I post stuff that I don't post here. Also I post stuff to Facebook sometimes so that's really where I post the majority of my stuff that isn't here. I, I haven't really ramped up my Instagram just yet. I will be doing that more. I'm just working on getting it all together. The more people follow, the more I'll realize people want to see stuff and the more I'll post. Not to be emotionally manipulative, I feel like that is. It's like, you know, I mean, I'm not Tinkerbell, you don't have to clap so I know I should keep living. But just letting you know, like if I've got like three followers, I'm only gonna put so much attention to it. Right now, on Instagram, I have 69 followers. Nice. And as, as fun as that number is, uh, go, go ahead and shatter that if you would like to <laughs> follow me on Instagram. It's all in the description. Okay, I'm gonna get back to my butt soup. You know what just happened? So you know how I've said before, sometimes these productions are sort of fraught with dangers and perils and mishaps of various kinds. So we've got the galley style kitchen. It's just a long, well, not long, but it's a narrow kind of thing. And in between me and the refrigerator, there is a tripod and there's a stand light and that's the whole width. So in attempting to get to the fridge, to put those pickles back in the fridge, I had to kind of like, you know, matrix around stuff. Um, and I managed to get them back in the fridge. But then when I went to go back into the fridge for something else, I found that when I was like, you know, trying to squeeze in and just real, you know, quickly, throw them back in the fridge. I had put them in a precarious position because it was all I could do from the angle I was at. And they fell out of the fridge and the lid came off. Half of it's on the floor. And I can't get to it because it's underneath the light. 
So it's just gonna sit there on the floor. <sighs> Unless I move the light and then hope I can get it back in the right place. So if the next time you see me, the light looks weird, we both know what happened. Just checking in to give a status report. I, I don't I don't know. I haven't been keeping track of the time. It has been much longer than 25 minutes though. It turns out that Huckleberry Gold potatoes have quite a bit more structural integrity than a russet potato. Because I know in the past I have boiled russet potatoes until they fell apart and these guys are hanging in there. It's executive decision time. Do I just keep cooking the crap out of them or and, and sort of risk overcooking the asparagus? But I kind of don't think you can overcook the asparagus because the whole point is that they're woody and you just want to cook them forever until you know you can break them down. I don't want to overcook the potatoes and like ruin the flavor. The other thing is there's only so much liquid in there and the longer you cook it, the more you know liquid you're gonna lose. Then again, it's not gonna be evaporating because I have the lid on it, but it is reducing a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to know what to do. On the bright side, whatever decision I make, if it turns out to be the wrong one, now you know which one is right and which one is wrong. <laughs> no matter what it is, I'm gonna eat it. Don't you worry. Oh, speaking of food waste, I cleaned up the stuff on the floor. So I think I got the light back in more or less the same place. So hooray for that. But I was thinking, and this is a, a great time for a fun fact about Kyoga beets. Uh, Kyo Kyogia, Kyogia, Kyogia? Fuck, I swore I'd remember it and already it's gone. Kyogia. It is a soft G, isn't it? Damn it. Stripey beets, okay? The fun fact about stripey beets is that they bleed less than regular red beets, but they do still bleed a little bit. And the that pigment, uh, is used for dyes and things because it stains really well. I don't want that sitting on my linoleum. I, I do eventually want my deposit back. So I got that cleaned up somehow. I got the light back up. The linoleum is fine. I am so tired and I would like this soup to be done. So there's been some breakdown of potatoes. It's been a while. It's been longer than 25 minutes. Executive decision, let's move on. Let's, let's, let's head on to the next step. Is remove it from the heat and use an immersion blender to puree the soup. If you don't have an immersion blender, trust me, they're worth their weight in gold, they're awesome. But if you don't have one, you don't have one. You can ladle it very, very carefully into a regular blender and do it like that. And just be careful, put a towel over it because it's really, really hot. And like potatoes hold heat like no one's business. I am actually a little bit nervous about whether or not the level of the liquid is gonna be high enough to keep me from splashing myself when I use the immersion blender because that is one of the tricky things about an immersion blender. You do have to have enough depth, otherwise you are gonna be in a little bit of trouble. But let's see what happens. Well, it's covering the thing. This is the moment of truth. I'm just gonna like stand so far back from it, as far back as I can. I feel like I'm showing you to do it. There is some splashing. I feel like we are at the absolute minimum level of liquid to safely do this. And I, I think we haven't even quite met that threshold. When it hits a solid piece of something, it does occasionally just kind of go, you know, hopefully it goes and not. Here's where I'm making a decision that I know is a bad decision and yet I'm making it anyway. I'm not gonna put it in another container because I'm tired. If you're doing this, and I suggest you do this because I think this is gonna taste nice and I think it's gonna be fun and not too difficult. I suggest doing it the right way. Let, 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 let that just be a standard uh, caveat. <laughs> Whenever you're watching me do something, there's probably a better way and that's probably what you should do. If I come out of this with like second degree burns, I mean, you're, you're justified in pointing and laughing. I, I accept it. <laughs> So I was concerned, the reason that they want you to have a starchy potato like a russet is because it's gonna help thicken things up. And I was concerned that this was gonna be a little too thin, but it's totally thickening up. I think this is gonna be great. I think it's gonna be just fine. I'm just doing short pulses, because the longer I leave it on, the more it seems to wanna splash. But if I do short pulses and turn it off and then turn it off, lift it up, put it on top of a piece of solid something and then turn it on, that seems to work a little bit better. You just start to feel these things out. So that and like, when you've cooked as long as I have, you just get used to burning yourself and you're just like, ah, 
Just ignore it, it'll go away. That's bad advice. Don't take that advice. Do do better than me. Be a better person than me. You can, I believe in you. So I think I got it. And guess what? I've got skin on 100% of my body still. Ta-da! It's not funny, this could have been very dangerous. It's incredibly hot and had that gotten on me, I would have been very unhappy. A little bit of it splashed onto my foot and it was really hot. Also wear shoes in the kitchen. Uh, just cause I don't doesn't mean you shouldn't. You should wear shoes in the kitchen. Especially if you drop things as often as I drop things. I'm a mess. So you really wanna get this as blended as you possibly can get it because the next step is we have to strain it. So the fewer large particles, the easier it's gonna be. So you really want this blended as much as humanly possible. I'm gonna give it just one more go through. I think I got all the chunks, but I'm gonna go searching for some just in case. So according to the book, the next step, and we're, we're almost done, we're almost there. So now we wanna pour the blended soup through a fine mesh strainer into a medium sized heat proof bowl, taking care to press as much of the thick asparagus pulp through the strainer as possible, leaving only the stringy fibrous material behind. And then we're gonna put the strained soup back into the pot. Here's a challenge. I do have a fine mesh strainer. I do. Would you like to see it? It's it's not real big. And I guess we're just gonna go one ladle at a time and hope for good things. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it's happening. It could take the rest of my actual life, but it is happening. Is this maybe too fine a strainer? The book does sort of talk about this recipe as though it's a very easy and quick thing to just whiz up if company's coming over and you need to make something that seems uh, fancy. So it is possible I have done something wrong. So I remembered that I had something. I got this guy here, which is a wire colander. This is working way better. I had a good plan and the plan is coming together. What I'm able to do is I've got more room to kind of flatten this out. More is coming out the bottom, but also I can see all these fibers and kind of flatten them against the mesh. And then when I think I've gotten like everything out of them, I can just scrape that up and put that in the garbage or something and then keep moving on. Had I stuck with a little bitty strainer, I would literally be here the rest of my life, which would be short because I would fling myself off something tall onto something sharp. So we got there in the end. The bowl was plenty big. I got not that much in there. It's not a beautiful color, but that's okay. And I wanted to show you, look at all of this fibrous kind of grossness. You couldn't eat that. This is why we don't eat the ends of asparagus. But we were still able to make food out of it. When you're hungry, you figure stuff out. I think soup is one of those things. It's uh, when all else fails and you've got very little, you can always find a way to make soup. We are going to put that back into the pot. You can heat it at a gentle simmer. Now, if you're using cream, it does say that you can add a little bit of heavy cream in there uh, to improve the flavor. I will be doing that. They specifically say that it is optional, but divine. I'm in the mood for some divinity. So we're gonna return the soup to the pot. We're gonna heat it at a gentle simmer, add our cream and let it continue to simmer for two to three minutes. Then we're going to season it with salt and pepper. And then once it's in the bowls, you can garnish it with chives, croutons or sour cream. So. so these are just the very ends of our green garlic. So I'm gonna use those instead of chives because I didn't get chives, but I got these and these are delicious. I feel like I'm not getting very much of the uh, asparagus flavor coming through. Maybe I should have used more asparagus, but I'm gonna use just a little bit of chicken salt, which is by the way, vegan. So if you're vegan and you would like to use some of that, you can. So here is our interestingly colored soup with our lovely garlic greens on the top. Isn't that pretty? Let's just see how this goes. That came together in the end. You can also put croutons in that. You can also, I think it said you can serve it with some sour cream if you wanted to at the end. I don't really feel like it needs that. I don't know, maybe then again. I could throw some on there, see how it goes. But, hmm, butt soup's pretty good. I would, I would eat this again. And now that I know what I'm doing, I think it would be a lot quicker to make it next time. Also, 
not to complain because I love doing this, but I feel like if I wasn't trying to also talk while doing it, I probably could do it a little bit more efficiently. Probably not though, let's be honest. But next time I will know what tools to use and what tools not to use. So when you make it, you can sidestep any of the mistakes that I made and you can do a lot better. Thank you so much for watching. If you try this out, I really hope you let me know. My email address is in the description. You can also join my uh, Facebook page and you can post there however you want to do it. Let me know if you tried it out and what you thought of it and what you what changes you made to it maybe. If you would like to send me something from my Amazon wishlist that I will absolutely use in an episode, that's also in the description. If you don't want to do that, that's also totally cool. So I am just happy that you're here watching this. But I do ask if you can, I would love it if you could like and subscribe. That just, it, it makes me so happy when that happens. I'm a very small YouTuber. I just passed 200 uh, subscribers, which is at a for me, a huge number. For YouTube, I am aware that's quite small. It's a, a, a modest audience. But for me, I'm at such a small level that every single subscription is like, I got another subscription, you know? So it's very appreciated. I have more fun things coming up to show you. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you join me next time. Bye. Hey, turn up the caramello and chisel on the shizney. Burrito. My pants are made of leather. I find a high